Hi everyone, welcome back to Farmers. You guys, shh, come closer. In this video, I wanna tell you four major things on how you can get into industry, what the major roles and scopes and like positions are, how a postgraduate degree versus just a B farm plus your experience compare and salaries to expect. You want to stay tuned for this. I hope you guys are doing well in the midst and continuing through this pandemic. Um, take care of you guys. Take care of yourselves, guys. Um, Go buy immune boosters, continue to boost your immune systems, exercise, eat balanced meals, lots of um, from the ground stuff, fruits, veggies, you know, you know. So um, yeah, take care guys, it's not, it's not cute out there. Mm -mm. Okay, so in terms of industry, y'all have been asking me and here it is, finally. <laughs> I get millions of questions um, on a regular, okay? How do I get into industry? What is a production pharmacist? What is a manufacturing? What is this? What is that? And I'm like, okay, okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm gonna tell y'all. Just give me a minute, okay? So this is the video, at least the part one. I don't know how long it's gonna be. We might have to do a part two. Actually, yes. Like this video, and if we get a hundred likes, I'll do a part two with tons more detail. Okay, let's make this an intro um, very sweet and short and simple. Okay. Industry, what does that even mean? A lot of times we throw around these words and, you know, we might not be on the same page. So how I understand industry is basically um, the collective of, you know, the manufacturers, the distributors, the wholesalers, the regulators, and all the components that come together and form the actual pharma industry, okay? So it's huge. Industry is the industry, <laughs> duh. But I mean, it's really intricate, right? Um, you have from research and clinical trials to manufacturers and wholesalers, distributors to suppliers and um, dispensers, not so much. So we never quite get into like the retail or community side with hospitals and clinics. It really encompasses the bulk of the background, okay? from the time, all the stuff that patients don't see, basically. If you see a pharmacist in a pharmacy or in a hospital, that's the last bit. Can these people stop making a noise? So rude. That's the last little bit. So the face-to-face -face with a pharmacist, that's the user end, okay? That's the facade and the face of pharmacy to the rest of the world. But the bulk, the crux of it is in the background, in the behind the scenes um, circus that goes on because it's a madhouse, okay? Um, you have, okay, let's move on to the different roles. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna try and timestamp this video. So if you don't wanna watch the whole entire thing, like most of you don't ever want to, then you can, you know, just fast track to the sections that you're interested in, okay? So that was the intro into industry, what it is. Um, now let's move on to the part where you have the actual components or the specific roles, because when you say you work in industry, what does that practically mean, right? You have compliance, you have pharmacovigilance, you have manufacturing, which encompasses production and quality assurance and quality control and um, formulation or um, what's the word? There's another word for it. Okay, never mind. But like the whole manufacturing process, 
uh, is under that umbrella. Okay, and then you have the production guys, which they ensure, you know, line clearance, opening, closing, um, that products are made according to specs. You have the quality control guys who do testing on like raw materials and um, in process checks and things, um, final products. And then you have the quality assurance that just regulates and kind of opposes the role of the quality control to make sure that stuff is done according to a QMS or a pharmaceutical uh, quality system with like SOPs and guidelines and um, training and ensuring that everything is running smoothly and appropriately. You have the released guys, the batch released pharmacists who ensure that the batch is correctly released, that it conforms, that if there were any deviations or non-conformities, that those things have been addressed and, you know, that everything is going according to plan. Um, and yeah, there's a lot. Pharmacovigilance, they overlook the product. They liaise with regulators and companies, pharma companies, um, and even patients uh, concerning ADRs and all that good stuff. Um, what else? You have the regulatory guys. Um, Woohoo! Uh, we check guidelines to make sure that the whole entire company is compliant, you know, with CGMP, with their processes and um, things like that. So, guys, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. But as a newbie looking at industry and not really understanding, I hope you start identifying all these various roles and then you can say, oh wait, during my schooling, I really enjoyed being in the lab and making the stuff. Perhaps you are a production pharmacist at heart. Maybe you really enjoyed um, the processing behind things, you know, compiling SOPs or ensuring or enforcing stuff like that. Maybe you're into QA or even regulatory. Um, but again, it really always depends. If you need a one-on-one -on -one consultation, um, do that. I always advise people to get a mentor in industry so they can really tell you the ins and the outs of their daily work. And then you can get a feel for what you really um, like and truly want to go towards, right? Because depending on the size of the company and the type of operations they do, like if it's a tiny company, you guys, they might only have one pharmacist and that person is going to do everything. They're going to be the RP. They're going to be the regulatory pharmacist. They're going to be the quality assurance. They're going to be the production validation person or batch release person. They're going to pretty much do everything. Okay. Um, and, but if it's a bigger company or organization, then you have various different sections and teams. So now you have a regulatory team with like a deputy regulatory affairs pharmacist and a, you know, an assistant and a this and a that. And then you have a whole QA team and then you have a whole pharmacovigilance team. So depending on the size, the roles get more and more intricate, more and more specific and um the salaries get bigger and bigger um <laughs> um so what's next qualifications okay i always get this question do i need to do a postgrad can i just get in with my b farm the question is it depends it always depends some people have done postgraduate degrees and they haven't got into the industry some people haven't got any additional qualification and they got in straight away. Okay, so it's almost like a you might get lucky or you need to work your behind off. Luck is in terms of, let's say there's an opportunity like now in Sapra, you know, mandated that all complementary things, uh, complementary medicines have to now get registered. That opened up a huge door for all these complementary companies to scramble for an RP of a pharmacist. And so you might get in through that way. Okay. 
um, that's luck or maybe there's nobody um, there's no candidate this company is desperate they've been looking for someone then you know you just happen to apply or maybe you know somebody who referred you you know contacts are really good to have in this industry um, again I've mentioned this in one of my very first videos last year talking about how to get a job in pharmacy or maybe it was an internship join associations join groups make yourself visible and most likely you're gonna hear say through the grapevine literally all of the jobs i've had have always been headhunted people were look came looking for me or heard about me and came and approached me so it really works in your favor if you put yourself out there more okay join associations join facebook whatsapp groups there's plenty of places that you could just really put yourself out there again if you need help if you need a private one-on-one -on -one consultation to deal with your exact specific case contact farmers we will help you okay so like i was saying um i've been in industry now for three years regulator uh, i started with sapra and that was from my postgrad so my master's was done in the uk it was biotech biofarm and that's how i got in so my degree actually helped me besides that the subsequent job that i got was from headhunting and from experience because i had gone and put myself out there guys there's no better way than to volunteer okay go ask a pharma company for literally two weeks three weeks four weeks whatever draft a really nice comprehensive nda because they're usually a bit finicky about like their information getting divulged but if you can bring them to confidence and assurance that here's an nda nothing will be leaked out or revealed or whatever um they can get a bit more comfortable and then the time they give you you need to bring it bring your excellence bring your diligence bring your eagerness bring your problem solving skills bring your energy you know that's how they can decide to keep you later on is oh wow you work really well how about you stay on or you know if there's a position that opens in the next few months you'll be the first one that they think about so really make yourself desirable okay i've had i've worked with people that are so hard to work with that are so underwhelming um that are so like you know shake your behind like show willingness energy you ask them like okay can you show me this process or how did you what did you learn here and they're like you know so lethargic and ugh, you don't want to be that person because i would never recommend you i would never want to work with you or want to keep you or retain you like even on my ambassadors uh, brand ambassador program like it was night and day those who came in for the right reasons who were eager and whatever and then those who were like you had to drag just to get one task done guys don't be that person you're not gonna get very far in life okay close brackets my point is <laughs> you need to work your behind off to get to where you want to truly be okay industry you need to know your personality do a personality check um, know what you like because it's really stringent and rigid if you don't pay attention to detail as with actually everything in pharmacy really um, you need to pay attention to detail you need to be on top of your knowledge of guidelines and um, everything uh, you know when you're doing your supplier qualification or when you're doing oh yeah I wanted to mention that by the way the time they give you for volunteering you need to go in and be on everybody's next in that company to learn okay show me your coas show me your batch release form how do you conduct an internal audit can i come and observe can i be on your um quality control checks can i come see this can i come see that like guys i actually want to draw up some sort of a, like a cheat sheet starter pack thing let me know if you're interested in the comments below um just something to look out for if you really want to get into industry um something to jumpstart you perhaps i'm thinking of like a really short comprehensive little starter pack 
Um, I've been in the industry, like I said, for three years. I have a really good colleague. She's the production queen. Perhaps we could put something together if you guys are interested that will really tell you, you know, the tick boxes, the check boxes, what? The stuff to check, oh my God, I can't speak. Um, it's really gonna give you a checklist, that's it. A checklist that you can really know um, at a glance, the stuff you need to be aware of and acquainted with as you get into industry. Um, and yeah, also guys, another great tip is look for the companies that take junior pharmacists with no experience, okay? Um, Aspen in East London and PE often take newbies. They're known for that, it's regular. So keep applying every month, every quarter, every year. If you really wanna get in, you need to put in the work, okay? Apply, let them get tired of seeing your name, of seeing your CV, um, and then eventually they'll call you in and you might just get a chance. So be aggressive. You know, this world is not for the faint hearted either way. I see these quotes of pick your heart, you know, struggling is hard. Being poor is hard. Being rich is hard. Pick your heart. Um, every sector has its challenges, but pick your heart. Okay. So yeah, degree versus no degree. I would say if you're not going to commit to two years, guys, it's 2021, things are expensive. There's a pandemic out there. You might not be able to commit to a full two-year degree doing an M farm or an industrial degree. Um, like if you saw my video about postgraduate opportunities and degrees in South Africa, you know all the examples and all the opportunities and options there are. So you don't need to do a regulator affairs postgrad or a, a industrial postgrad. You can actually literally just take free or sometimes very affordable workshop or conferences, um, conferences, no, mostly workshops from like SAPI. They have amazing industry workshops you can do from Quad Farm, you could do with the twins, consultants. I mean, there's a lot of shortcuts to actually getting an awareness, um, knowledge about industry so that in an interview, you can pretty much defend your way in. You can tell them, look, I don't have experience, but I've self-taught myself or I've researched about this and that. I know about a QMS. I know about the components. I know about annual product quality reviews. I know about, um, what, risk management. I know about, you know, Kappa cycles, whatever. Like, you just need to show yourself knowledgeable enough to make it through that interview. And there you have it. The post is yours. Go and be great, okay? This End with a quick glance into the salaries, and then we can do part two if this video reaches 100 likes. Um, salaries, just one sentence, guys. It's really nothing to be hesitant about. Um, the minimum I've seen starts at 50 K a month because ugh, it's industry. I mean, these are the kings and the queens of pharmacy. Um, I personally have seen salaries going up to 100 K a month. So you best believe people are brushing with a million rands per annum. Easy, so easy. And this is not that much of experience. Three, four, five years. Um, so imagine if you're 10 years in. Imagine if you're like an OG in this stuff. So the earlier you get to put your foot through the door and really learn the works, um, learn the ropes, um, really fasten yourself to the industry, the guidelines and just seek opportunities. Some people just sit in a role for 10 years and they never look over their shoulder to see, oh, there's an opportunity over there. Let me take a risk. Don't be afraid, guys. What's the worst that could happen? Maybe you'll not be fit for the role or maybe you'll get a warning or need training or whatever, but 
The fact is nothing happens without you taking a risk, okay? Take a risk, but know your personality so that you know you're gonna be diligent, you're gonna be hardworking, you're gonna be meticulous, and you're gonna show and put out great work, okay? I'll keep it here. Um, it's already way too long, but I hope this video helped. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you in part two. Bye.